Welcome to the Elevate the Edge podcast. I'm Maribel Lopez of Lopez Research, and I'm joined with my co-host, Joe Peterson of Clarify 360. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome. Elevate the Edge is published bi-weekly. The podcast focuses on helping companies understand what edge computing is, how the market will evolve, and what you need to know to build successful edge computing strategies. Show notes and subscription links can be found at elevatetheedge.com slash episodes. We hope you'll enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Maribel Lopez and I'm joined here today with my fabulous co-host Joe Peterson. Hey Joe. Hey Maribel. And as always, we are excited to be joined here today by another great technology guest. We are joined with Andy Hules, and she leads Lenovo's enterprise AI business in North America. She is the go-to-market executive with experience in artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics. Uh, Andy advises global and Fortune 500 companies on how to drive agility and reinvent their operations with AI, which I think we can all appreciate as something that's really important these days. Uh, she's been working in AI solutions with senior executives in retail, uh, QSR, CPG, supply chain, manufacturing. We could go on, and I'm really excited to hear that she has also recently been uh, awarded in Gattaca's Top 50 Women in Tech. So wonderful to have you on the program, Andy. Excited to talk to you about the edge and AI. Well, thank you for inviting me to be part of Elevate the Edge. So, Andy, you know, there are a lot of definitions kind of rolling around in the industry right now. And I was wondering if you wanted to spend a minute helping us level set and what is Edge AI and how does it work? Sure, absolutely. That's a, a question that I frequently get. What do we mean by the edge? Is it the edge of my desk, the edge of the universe? What are we talking about? <laughs> An edge AI server is actually a very small device. It's not much bigger than a laptop. And inside of an edge AI server, you have uh, several components that make it edge AI. The first of, of which is typically a GPU. You also always have a CPU. And the secret sauce is your independent software vendor. So what it, whatever that AI software is, it gives it the unique use case. And Lenovo's portion of this is we actually manufacture those edge AI servers. Now, what do I mean by the edge? It simply means that you're on-prem. So rather than uh, processing all of the data in the cloud, you're keeping it on-premises um, near the source of that data. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, Joe and I have been talking to a lot of people about the edge and we're always amazed at how many different um, definitions of the edge we get and how many different things are included in the edge. So it's great that um, you already spoke a little bit about the, you know, what is an edge uh, AI server? And that was going to be a question that either Joe or I were going to ask you, but Joe, I'm going to pass it back over to you. And um, I know you had a question that you wanted to talk about in the analytics field. Yeah, I do. Well, but before we go there, I wanted to see from Andy if we could talk about, you know, we know what an edge AI server is, but how is that different than some of the other devices that a customer is going to have in, in their environment? What do you think, Andy? Yeah. So what it's doing is actually processing that data and deriving insights in microseconds. Um, rather than sending all the data collected by IoT sensors directly to the cloud, Edge computing processes this data within the network and only relevant data is sent. And that has a lot of benefits. Would you like me to go through those? Well, you know, I actually, I was going to ask you about, you know, the benefits of that instant data and how it can help companies uh, differentiate them in the marketplace. Because I'm sure as you in your in your travels, you get to see some of that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll give you a couple of examples. I'm sure a lot of you have been to, say, a Kroger grocery store, right? Well, self-checkout is actually Edge AI. And if you think about if you're a, a red customer versus a green customer, a red customer is is out to, to steal or to, um, you know, malign the uh, the grocer, whereas a green customer is just simply, you know, not being able to scan their bag of frozen peas, right? 
And in the case of a red customer, if we're sending that to the cloud and then waiting for it to come back down, that information, you'll already be in the parking lot. So latency is that concept. It's we, we can't have a delay in the processing of the data. Another example would be McDonald's drive through We do natural language processing voice to text in the drive through at McDonald's. Well, think about it. If you're placing your order, but it needs to go to the cloud and then come back down, that's <laughs> going to actually make the drive through speed longer. And instead, because we're using Edge AI, we've taken 30 seconds off of the, the time it typically takes to go through a McDonald's drive through So latency is one area that's very important that that's a reason you need to be on-prem. Another is um, simply security, right? Think of all of that data that we're processing, whether it's intelligent store analytics and where you're walking in the store and what you're picking up and looking at and so forth. That's private. And we don't want that going up to the cloud or even leaving the building. So um, that type of information, that's another reason why we want to use an Edge AI device on-prem. Another would be communications. I mean, think about your own home when your internet goes down. That simply can't happen, right? Uh, so we use Edge AI servers in um, use cases where it's absolutely imperative that our communication is 24-7, always on. Like self-checkout, again, we can't hope that the internet is always on. So um, those are some of the reasons that you want to use an Edge AI server. Oh, those are good reasons. I, you know, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but you're saying that the Wayne's World donut example wouldn't fly <laughs> anymore with the Edge AI. No, oh, no my goodness. <laughs> There's no that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, the combination of computer vision, uh, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wayne's World. Wow, that is the the way back machine, and that it's is. kind of funny to have that in Edge AI in the same conversation. But at any rate, uh, so we've talked a little bit about the edge AI server, we've talked a little bit about where, um, you know, why we want to have things on the prem. What are some of the characteristics around that, around latency, security? Uh, sometimes it's cost. A lot of times it is uh, also around uh, data residency and other things. And you gave us a couple of examples as well, but I thought maybe we could dig into that a little more because I know that you're doing so many interesting things. And you know, can you share maybe a few more really common edge AI use cases and maybe some that we have not heard about yet? Sure, absolutely. Um, another example that's becoming more common, you probably see it when you're in an airport, is autonomous shopping. So this is similar mm -hmm. to self-checkout, except there's absolutely no you know, human involved. You're going to scan your phone, take your items, leave the store, and then within a few minutes, you're going to receive a receipt. Now, that is absolutely critical that, you know, you have an Edge AI server because otherwise, literally, people would just leave the store and uh, and take whatever they'd like. So um, that's, um, you're going to see that growing a lot more. Um, we talked about, um, we talked about self-checkout. So that's a very prevalent one that you see a lot. Another is um, one of my partners, Radius AI, is doing intelligent store analytics. So when we think about where do people go in the store, what do they look at, and, and this type of information is absolutely priceless, right? Um, think about how many people are in line at the store. That helps us solve the issue of, of labor because instead of guessing when we need to have employees, we know, especially after you collect, say, a year's worth of data, you know exactly your busiest times and when you don't need as many staff. Um, think about, you know, lot or pump analytics at a convenience store, right? How many people that pump gas actually come in and buy anything? How many use the restroom? How many buy one product versus another product? You don't even have to know who the person is or, or see their face, but you can use their gaze to know what um, what their analytics are, right? So that's very, very popular now because stores are realizing uh, we want to know when we when we have customers and what they're doing and what they're looking at. It's valuable information. Um, another area that's becoming very um, a hot topic for retailers and restaurants is safety. It used to be theft. We used to have the security guards that were always watching you to make sure you didn't steal, which is um, 
it's still an issue. But now the bigger issue for retailers and restaurants is the employee and customer safety. So what are some things that we can do with AI at the edge that can increase safety? Uh, well, one of those is facial matching technology. So if Maribel has just um, robbed um, a convenience store down the street, Joe can then, if she has the facial matching technology, can then match Maribel so that she's not going to be able to come into another uh, store and rob as well. So known felons and so forth can be detected and so you can really increase safety that way. We also have a brash of organized crime where groups of say 10 will come in at the same time, all scoop up product and, and rush out. But with computer vision and edge AI, you can actually detect when 10 people are coming together in a pack, moving quickly throughout the store. And some of the, the gestures think about you know, hands up in the air is not something you typically do when you're in a store. Lying on the floor is not, you know, those type of gestures um, can immediately be, we can alert the authorities. So that's another one. And also think about your highest value products, like say Tide Pods. Now, if Maribel is in Kroger and she's filling her entire cart with Tide Pods, that might give Joe, the store manager, something to, you know, wonder why in the world does she need that many? Maybe she's going to steal them. So what we can do with computer vision and edge AI is watch those high value products. And when someone's filling their entire cart with those, we can lock the wheels of the cart, right? So that she doesn't pose a danger flying through the store trying to steal that entire cart load. So those are just some of the uh, the areas that are kind of interesting for the for right now and in the future of edge AI. Yeah, what I what I love about the intersection of these two technologies, in one sense you've got um basically rapid analytics happening for for like a more late layman's term on this and on the second hand you have just the concept of taking vision not even tied to somebody if we take the public safety and security out of it but really being able to understand various store environments and having a, a real understanding of the experience that's happening what are the things that are impacting the experience? Uh, even understanding if people, like how, how people in general behave, you know, do they pick up items and put them down? How often do they pick them up and actually buy them versus just putting them back down? And that can actually tell things to the buyer without even needing to know if it's Maribel or Joe that, you know, these products are resonating, these products aren't resonating, or People just don't like the store because the layout differs on the other stores. So they're not actually navigating through the store in the right way. Or you're creating a new fan experience in a stadium, right? Which is another thing. How do we create uh, more personalized experiences to different people? So I think that there's a lot of opportunity um, at the intersection of looking at, you know, com computer vision with, you know, high performance computing, right? Yeah, and retailers realize that they collect all that data online. You know, when I'm shopping online, they can see everything and, and then market to me. Well, how do they do that when they don't have that data from the, you know, the actual retail experience? So now they're realizing they can use Edge AI uh, and computer vision to collect that same type of data and, um, and market more effectively. A lot of retailers also sh sell their shelf space. So if you know that the Maybelline um, has, you know, so much time, you know, people look at it and then they look at the cover girl and then they buy the Maybelline, you can sell that data back to Maybelline or you can charge them more for the shelf space uh, based mm -hmm. on actual data. This is how many people are coming into our store to look at your products. This feels, you know, like a great marriage between IT and marketing as you go into these meetings, Andy, who do you see in these meetings? Are, is that who you see at the table? Where does this sort of idea start in a, in a retail organization? That is a great question because um, working at Lenovo, initially folks at Lenovo were like, we're going to sell to the IT department like we always do. But that mm -hmm. is not the case with, with Edge AI. Really, these... Um, uh, these ideas, these this digital transformation has to come from the top. If you take, say, Target CEO Brian Cornell, he said uh, the most, uh, we're going to spend $4 billion a year on one thing, and that is speed. How is he going to get speed, right? Um, how is he going to get that type of information quickly? Because now we all have this insatiable need for speed, right? 
And um, AI is the way that you're going to do it. If you think about Doug McMillan, he said um, at the CES keynote, and, and he's the CEO of Walmart, I'm going to focus on three things next year, big data analytics, robotics, and artificial intelligence, right? So when it starts from the top to answer your question, it's usually at the C-level. Um, so usually I'm talking to somebody that's a digital transformation executive, the CTO. Now we're seeing a lot more chief innovation officers and even some, you know, uh, far-fangled titles like the next gen supply chain leader, you know, that type of title. But almost never is it the IT manager. It's, uh, it starts from that and then it trickles down. And and so you bring me to my next question. Um, it seems obvious to me but I'd love to get your thoughts on it. These folks that are forward thinking, like the the people that you just mentioned that realize the need, um, how much further ahead is it going to put them from their peers, from their competitors, this sort of AI differentiation that you're discussing? It's really going to give them a quantum leap ahead of their competitors. And right now, you know, when I present to companies, they, there's still some of them are not ready. They think that AI is going to be on their, it should be on their, you know, technology roadmap for the future. And that could not be further from the truth. You can, it's very easy to deploy. Um, and as long as you know all of the ecosystem players, which was what Lenovo brings to you, we bring you the ISV, we connect you with NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, all of the partners so that you know you can implement these use cases. But some of the advantages that those retailers are going to have, uh, we touched on um, self-checkout, for example, decreases customer friction, right? Instead of having to stand in line, you're easily able to do it yourself and get out of there quickly. Safety is another huge one. Um, I'd rather shop at a, a store where I knew there was you know, known felon detection because I feel safer in that environment. Um, another area will be... Um, will be uh, just efficiencies, right? There, it's, it's going to be set, the layout of the store is going to be set up to be more efficient for us to get in and out quickly because they know how to do that. And you think about a quick service restaurant, um, we can use Edge AI to actually, you can use your voice to, to, act, to speak the order and that's going to speed up the process. So you just walk up to the counter and your order's already ready. So, and also labor, there's, you know, there's a huge labor shortage right now. And so they'll be able to predict when they need uh, more employees so that we're not waiting in line quite as long. So there's all kinds of advantages, and and it's just going to absolutely speed up their operations. So it's going to be table stakes in the future, not a nice to have. I absolutely agree with that. Mandy, you know, um, you're out talking to a lot of organizations is there something that you think the people that are listening to this podcast should know about Edge AI or something that's counterintuitive or that you'd like to set the record straight on for those that are listening and wondering what to do next with Edge AI? Sure. Um, here's a couple of tips. Um, first of all, there's there's a rack server, which is very large, <laughs> about as large as my wingspan here, and, uh, and then the Edge AI server. What we don't want to do is stack these devices on top of each other. And when you think especially retail and restaurant environments, they don't have a lot of space, right? And even one Edge AI server takes up, you know, it's about the size of a laptop. So what what you want to do is you want to think about what use cases do I want to deploy? Because what happens is you tend to deploy one and then you're like, wow, that's amazing. And you get this like appetite for AI and you want more. So if you actually, if you purchase a server that can do multiple use cases, you can, that's all of the space you need. And our SE450 can do up to 14 AI use cases in the same box, right? So that's one tip is to make sure you're, you're future-proofing yourself, thinking ahead about what do I want to do with AI? And we can do an AI innovation showcase for you so that you know all the different use cases And you can pick from those. Another is um, think about your technology. Even our iPhones, after three years, you're like, I want a new phone. I want the latest technology. The same goes with Edge AI servers. So what I highly recommend is that you consider doing an OpEx strategy versus CapEx, meaning lease it, basically rent the equipment, because in three years, the technology will be significantly better 
And then you can refresh that equipment at no cost to you, right? So you'll have the latest and, and greatest. Um, so those are a couple of tips that I would highly recommend for um, especially retailers and restaurants. So Andy, you've been great today. We always ask one fun fact to round out and close out the podcast and it doesn't have to be about tech. So have you got anything? What fun fact do you want to share? Well, you know, you're asking um, a tech nerd for something fun. So I'm going to have to, um, to probably give you a, my idea of a fun fact is that by 2025, edge compute is expected to be four times larger than the cloud and generate 75% of the world's data. So not only is that fun in Andy's mind, but it's also great job security. <laughs> it is. It is job security. Well, you've been so fun and so gracious today. Thank you so much for taking time with us. We really appreciate it. And we're excited to see what you do next, Miss Andy. Well, thank you so much for having me on Elevate the Edge. I enjoyed meeting you both. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe so you can easily find us again. Follow us on Twitter at Maribel Lopez and at Digital Cloud Gal and on LinkedIn. Links to our social profiles, show notes, and ways to listen to the podcast can be found at elevatetheedge.com.